every week about business analysis and at this time we have a special group of videos uh, targeting on presenters of the BBC, the Building Business Capability Conference, the greatest business analysis conference that's going to happen in June on uh, at Florida. And for today I have two presenters of the BBC to be my guest and answer a nice question. They are Grant and Brent Wright and Patty Danda. Hello, folks. Thank you for coming. Hi, Fabrizio. Hey, Thank Fabrizio. you for having us. It's you know, I, Fabrizio, you, you actually said my name just like a Punjabi person would say my surname. So that was very good. Yeah, oh, probably the <laughs> Portuguese accent helping me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. A bit of, bit of Punjabiness, I think. Some Punjabi blood in you. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Uh, I, I have to work more in Grant's name than your name, Patty. Probably. <laughs> so, my question for you today is related to your presentation at BBC. My question is Can any BA, any business analyst, do sketch noting? Should I start, Patty? Yeah, go for it. So um, I think I think the first thing there that I picked up on was sketch noting. So I think there's sketch noting, and then there's the wider term visual thinking. Um, and I think a lot of what Paddy and I do, we look at visual thinking holistically. So sketch noting, my perspective on it, is sketch noting is where you're acting as a visual reporter. You're you're making sense of a talk or a training course or something for your own benefit and you create a sketch note as, a, as an output to record that or maybe an experience um, that you've been on something like that so it's almost like you're recording the outcome of an event whereas i think visual thinking more broadly has other facets so our uh, our friends at bureau brand who are the authors of the, the visual thinking book um they talk about five visual thinking types and our talk that we're going to do at the conference is going to kind of explore those different visual thinking types um, as part of the story we're going to tell at the conference. So as well as the visual reporter that we've talked about, there's the visual designer using visuals to create an output that's visually appealing and creates engagement. There's the visual storyteller, which is about using visuals to literally tell a story, whether you're know, trying to win hearts and minds of, of, of people, those kind of things. There's the visual co-creator where you're kind of collaborating with others and using visuals to help kind of in that co-creation space. Um, and there's the visual analyst, which is where you're using visual thinking to just make sense of things for yourself really um, and connect the dots and, and, and understand complexity. So when you ask the term can, you know, can be a kind of sketch note, I'd say, um, they can, but I think if the question was, can they use visual thinking more broadly? I think the answer is absolutely. There's there's lots of ways in which you could apply it. Mm. Yes, but absolutely. for sketch noting, what you said, Patty, and so 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 I understood from the Brent's answer that any BA can use visual thinking as a tool, and that makes a lot of sense. But sketch noting specifically. Is mm. that for anyone or you must have some kind of superpowers to do that? I think sketchnoting, I mean, it depends. If you want to make beautiful visuals, right, then that comes with practice. And I would say some of the things that I've seen, some, some of the amazing people out there produce, like even I shy away from doing some of that to that level because I'm thinking that requires loads of practice and to do it live as well in the moment is really can be quite challenging but i think you know we we all at some point when we're taking notes we'll draw a diagram um and so in a way that's that's sketch noting as well because what we're using there is visual 
uh, techniques to help uh, complement the message that we're trying to capture. And so that's really what sketch noting is all about. It's about using visuals and the writing. And the idea there is, you know, it, it, there, there's lots of theories out there, but there's dual coding theory, which talks all about, you know, for us to remember things, um, we're really good at remembering things if we've written them down and we have some visual to back them up with, because we embed that knowledge in two channels within our brain. And then when we recall information, it's much easier for us to recall it as opposed to us just writing things down. So sketchnoting can be really useful for remembering things in the future and making sense of what you heard. But then actually producing the sketch notes, it's like with anything, it's a step-by-step -step process. But Grant and I always say, if you can write, you can draw. And so if you just follow some of those basic techniques, yeah, there will come a point where you know people do get confident enough to be able to do sketch noting, I think. Can, can we do some exercise and so you can prove me your theory? Yeah, sure. let's do it. All right, so let's put our desks here. I would just arrange it. This is mine. Sure, so, so one one exercise that, that's, that we love to do when we hear that people say they, they can't draw, they don't think they can draw. Um, one of our favorite exercises to run is squiggle birds so we're going to have a go at squiggle birds now because it's really good at showing that anybody can draw okay right. so to do squiggle birds we just need to draw some squiggles random squiggles on the page okay so so i'm going to use a different colored pen here just to kind of so you can see what i'm, what I'm doing but we're going to turn these squiggles into birds choose somewhere that looks like it might be a good place to have the bird's head and create a little beak with just a little triangle a line through it i'm going to add the dot for the eye i'm going to add some feet to my bird just classic crow's feet like that and then some kind of tail could be a simple triangle i'm going to go for something like this and we've just created a squiggle bird. So whatever kind of tail you, you want. There you go. Paddy, you've almost created a squiggle peacock there or something. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, so that's the exercise. So we just need to fill in our squiggle birds in about a minute and see what right. we come up with. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. This one? Beak or something. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I thought about my parrot. You have a parrot? Yes, I do. Yes. You do? Does <laughs> it speak Portuguese? Uh, it sings. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it's a she, and she sings Portuguese, uh, uh, so some basic music and stuff like that, and makes a lot of noise. And if she's here with us in, the, in this meeting, nobody talks, just her. <laughs> very loud. Oh, awesome stuff. And um, and Paddy, what what have you come with us for here then? I can't, I can't oh gosh, you. mine oh, are yeah. all over the place. But I I think what I like to do with this activity is actually try to put the beak in lots of different kind of angles like on each one. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, Interesting. like this one here, although you know, looking at it now, it looks like it's almost the, the bird's falling. Um, whereas the other ones maybe look like they're just sitting. Uh, this one looks like it's flying this way. So I think yeah. just experimenting, even with simple things like just just you know putting the beak and things in different places can really change the whole perspective of the squiggle. Cool. Well, what about your um, square? Great. Oh, I go on. Um, so I uh, most of mine, I, I I do tend to just 
find the obvious shape that feels like it could be the the head but and this one was was <laughs> I said I had to use a spare so I, I went for the bird bending down and and then this one I just I don't know this shape here maybe think oh maybe it's more like a flamingo style bird I don't know so I I went for that but yeah <laughs> but like like cool. like exactly like Paddy it's just seeing what's there and just seeing what thought it triggers but I, th I think what this does is it proves that you know, we've all been able to draw what can be recognised as as birds. You know, people, we can show these pictures to somebody and they'd say, yeah, I can see what that is. And we've, t we've done that from a few squiggles. It's because our brains are kind of pattern making machines. You know, we don't have to see the full visual, the full picture to make the connection and the meaning from the image. And when we're drawing in a business context and we're trying to make sense of, of problems, um in in that context it's it's not about the artwork it's about drawing things that are good enough to be recognized to have meaning to be able to express and share an understanding of something um i mean obviously you can learn techniques to kind of help you get better at articulating yourself visually but the principle is you know you can get there with actually quite a low amount of effort you, you can do quite a lot but I mean, it, it, it activates other parts of her brain. If you are just talking about a bird eating a, a verb or a, a, a worm or something like that, it's something when you see that uh, it, it makes you think more clear. It helps you to, to, to think about stuff. And the interesting thing is, although we drew birds, I mean, we could turn these into people, right? So it, it, it doesn't have to be birds. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, if you added a few human features, someone would recognize that it looks more human uh, than, than, you know, just a squiggle. So when, when people say, oh, I, I draw stick people or I'm, you know, not very good at drawing, well, even with a squiggle, you can actually make it look like a person. So uh, it, it's it's just about having fun with it. And, and so what if, you know, it doesn't quite have the dimensions of a realistic person? Uh, the bottom line is, as long as someone can recognize that it looks human, then that's the main thing. Could you test? Could we test this? Like <laughs> try to, 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 to squiggle some some people doing actual work? Yeah, we could try. Yeah. Sorry, I probably took more time than a than a minute, but uh, <laughs> right. Let, uh, let me just start. To, to, we gotta have a look at these. Start commenting. Oh, who's there? So nice. Yeah, oh. go on, Grant. Let's go with yours first. Go first, first, Grant. Oh, you have Superman. We. Yeah, that one was just like an upward spiral that made me think of that trajectory, and so I, I just extended it. The the praying and the fishing ones, I, I almost saw the shape of the body in the squiggles already, so I just kind of added where I wanted to put the the head and decorated it a bit. Um, I had no idea on the one on the right. I just drew this big block thing and then I thought of a big block person but I don't know what that's trying to be. That looks <laughs> like a robot to me, like almost robotic. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. A strong know. guy. Yeah, mm. could have that. But it's interesting what, what shape you use starts to convey meaning, doesn't it? Uh, drawing quite square solid shapes changes your visual. If you draw triangles the more dynamic action based if you draw circles or ovals they're softer so yeah you, you can you can start to do quite a lot with just simple shapes mm. it, it, it it enhances your creativity because you started from some different perspectives and start creating something yeah very nice exactly very nice mm. what about yours patty 
Oh, mine. Yeah, I, I try to keep it quite simple. So uh, I just um, I, I just did a sort of a, a squiggly thing upwards. And then, um, yeah, like the the head, you know, if you want to avoid drawing little features like the eyes and the nose, because sometimes they don't always add anything new to the picture, right? Because if, if I had um, an expression on this face, like I still, I still know he's running, right? right. Even without the, the gestures on the face. Um, so unless we're trying to depict emotion, we don't really need any eyes or nose or, or, or mouth or anything. Um, so I just went with a, a kind of a, a squiggle for the head. Uh, and, and yeah, just, just try to do different movements of jumping, falling, and I'm not sure what this guy was, but uh, I thought I turned him into the one of these things of good. a can, Oh, very nice. And it, it's very nice how you you really create some movement with very few lines, just just small lines, and you create a movement, and we can see the the, mm. the guy in movement. Really nice. I, 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 I try to inspire myself from the from the sketches that we put my on here. Uh, the first one is walking and, and, and I try to always find the face and I, I use the eyes to, to, to find the person. Uh, and I like it very much how you did that in saying that that's not exactly necessary, but I try to put some expression like this one is working on his uh, notebook. This one is falling uh, and probably saying ah or something like that <laughs> this one is pushing the the wall here uh, i, I yeah. saw these two circles here and i i almost Love it. saw someone yeah. riding a bike and this squeeze like here i saw oh this looked like a hair a nice hair so she's br brushing his long hairs that's that was the yeah idea. i i really like the way you've expanded it to beyond just the person so you've actually added other um almost accessories right like the bike um i really like the hair one i was watching what you're doing with that one when you're drawing it i was like where's this going to go with this and where's then, he going with this yeah yeah uh, i was doing the same question <laughs> but it's great to watch you and see like where you started and then how it's evolved and absolutely i think anyone looking at that can see it's more of a female character with long hair you know someone who's very proud of their hair probably flicking it back so uh, yeah, and and you know, like a, a lot of the time, people do get a little bit carried away with visuals. Uh, you know, what we find is when people start drawing, they're like, "Oh yeah, I can I can now do everything visually." But actually, sometimes having the words helps cement the message, right? So so words are still powerful and still useful. And um, you know, like we were talking about there, you were saying the the one in the top right is falling down. They're going ah like that. Um, if you decided not to include the expression, um, you could just have have the lettering going ah like that next to it. So straight away, someone knows that that person looks like they're uh, <laughs> they're out of control. <laughs> so the words can also bring the message across. Mm, into that's the message. Here. Ah, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it's that, it's that dual coding theory that Paddy mentioned again. If you add words to complement your visuals you're tapping into both sides of the brain but also you're you're cementing and bringing clarity so i think i think by, by exactly like i said a lot of people think oh i've got to i'm practicing visual thinking i've got to draw everything well you, you don't it's, it's perfectly okay to write words and to to give clarity you know, it wouldn't be obvious that my person in the bottom left here was praying unless i labeled that i think but as soon as i've labeled it I think you can get it. You can see what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's also visual, right? Words are visual as well. Yeah, right? yeah. If you write them down, yeah. The, uh, uh, very nice, very nice. I know that you're doing at BBC a presentation uh, talking about the five visual thinking types that Grant mentioned at the beginning, but you are also conducting a workshop there, and uh, the workshop is about the sketchy business analysts. Why should people go to, 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 to be there? And what are you guys going to present at this workshop at the pre-conference? We've, we've, we've got a few surprises. And um, if someone, if anyone saw a recent LinkedIn post that we, we posted where I was talking about Bangra, and if anyone doesn't know what Bangra is, it's a form of uh, Indian dance. Uh, so 
if, if anyone knows Grant and I, we, we just we like to have fun and we like to make things engaging. So uh, even though the session will be very hands-on, very practical about visual thinking, we're going to have fun with it. So uh, if you like fun and you want something a little bit different, not just a typical talk, then yeah, we, we, would, we would love for you to come. And it is going to be very sort of very much aimed at anyone who is new to visual thinking, perhaps feels they can't draw, uh, wants to build that confidence. And I believe by the end of the session, people will walk away a little bit more confident and happier. And that's the aim, I think. And Grant, I don't know if you want to add anything else to that. No, I think that's fine. I think I think for the workshop, that's exactly the the aim, just to give people a taste and to to demonstrate what what they've got within them, really. Um, and and the talk that we're giving is is actually, I guess, us trying to take this beyond just here's how you can draw some interesting visuals, but how can you actually use that? And, and we. We're doing a talk where we tell a story about a, a, a business analyst who's turned product owner and progressing their career and how they leverage different types of visual thinking on their journey. And we bring it back to those five visual thinking types that we, we talked about at the beginning. And you get to watch uh, Grant doing some Bangra dancing. Now that's priceless. So uh, be sure to be there for that. I'm not sure anybody's agreed to that, but that's... Uh... <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm super excited to be at BBC and to meet you guys in person. Finally, it's going yeah. to be uh, epic. Yeah.